for everybody. My name's Scarlett. I'm here today to talk to you about teeth. Um, so I'm a vet that works for the First Vet um, company who are a digital vet that allows you to book a video call, get help, treatment or advice whenever you need um, to your nearest vet clinic. Um, so I'm here today and I've been asked by Waggle, the insurance provider, to talk to you about your pet's teeth. I hope you're all here. Please interact with me. It will make it so much more interesting if we can be a more of a conversation than me just talking at you. So send me some emojis to let me know you're listening in. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them as we go. I'll try and answer them or I'll come back to them at the end. <clears throat> So Waggle wanted me to remind you that actually they're one of the um, few insurance providers that allows you some dental coverage and they cover up to a thousand pounds towards dentals per year. Um, but you do need to make sure it's not a pre-existing condition. So your pet needs to have been checked um, beforehand and had the all clear from the vet. Um, OK, so I thought we'd start with just some basic kind of dental anatomy because um, I'm sure most of you probably didn't go into this too much and I thought it'd be useful to know a little bit about teeth so I'm really sorry I've tried to draw a picture of a tooth I'm not an artist <laughs> so I hope it's good enough tooth <laughs> so this is a cross section here so we've got our gum we've got the enamel which is the white that we see on our teeth and that's also known as the crown we then got our dentine and our pulp so our pulp cavity is full of nerves and blood vessels and that's what hurts basically and that's the bit we really don't want to be affected by disease because it's going to be sore. Lower down on the tooth we have something called the cementum and that's what we see here in green and that's what really allows the periodontal ligaments which are ligaments that attach your tooth to your bone and that's what holds everything in place. So the cementum is like the cement, it's the bit that bridges the gap to the periodontal ligament and holds it in your mouth. So I suppose why is this important? Because this is the bit we see, but we've got all of this going on underneath and it's all sitting in our mouth. So often with our pets, we don't know the half of it. Um, and their tooth roots can be huge. So canines in dogs are massive. Some of the teeth I've removed, the root is longer than the tooth itself. So dental procedures are complicated and teeth are actually really exciting. And what you see in the mouth is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, I thought we could start with something quite simple. So teeth in general in dogs and cats. So when you get a puppy and kitten, they will have a set of baby teeth. And just like children, they will lose them all. Um, dogs start with 28 and kittens start with 26. And then dogs go on to have 42 adult teeth, which I always think is amazing that they manage to cram them all in there and cats end up with 30. So during this period of time, between the age of four and six months, your dogs and cats will start losing their baby teeth. And you might see them scattered around the house, you might see them in the litter box or in their poop, or you may never find them. I never did with my puppy. <laughs> I have no idea where they went. Um, and during the teething stage, they will want to chew on everything. They're just like babies, to be honest. Um, let me know if you've uh, had any of your puppies and kittens chewing weird things. Um, my puppy constantly chewed on my duvet and it is still stained to this day. I did not appreciate that particularly. Um, but what I wanted to give you some advice on was how to help soothe them because it can be quite frustrating when you come home and your favourite pair of shoes have been tuned or maybe the edge of a chair or a table leg um, and there are lots and lots of toys out there now that can help. Um, you can go into your normal pet shop and buy teething toys. Things like Kongs can also be quite good because you can put them in the freezer um, and you can make it nice and cold for their mouth. Um, you can also, for kittens, try the same, try different textures of toys, so maybe things that crinkle that they can have a really good crunch on. I often get people asking me, why is my cat chewing my feet and my legs and my arms? And it's often uh, because they're teething uh, <laughs> when they just want something to chew on. So try a big range of textures. I can see people saying they're flip flops as well. Definitely a common one. Um, yeah, my boyfriend's flip flops got eaten by my, my dog. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Um, <clears throat> but they just they just they do seem to like that kind of rubbery texture. So Kongs and licky mats and things like that can really help. Um, so they should lose all of these de deciduous teeth 
but sometimes they don't and sometimes we have to go in and remove them and somebody's just asked um, what breeds are more prone um, to having dental disease and it's a good question there are some that do seem a little bit more prone to it and um, I often find flat-faced dogs, so brachycephalic breeds, so things like bulldogs, pugs, shih tzus, they seem quite prone to it, as well as these tiny little breeds like chihuahuas and Yorkshire terriers, because they also have 42 teeth in their mouth, but they've got this tiny, tiny little space to cram it all in. So it's much, much harder for teeth to shed and to form normally and in good alignment. You're much more likely to see issues um, because you're fitting all these teeth in a much smaller space. Um, and with these guys in particular, because it is such a tiny little mouth, it can be a real challenge to work out what's a baby tooth and what's an adult tooth, because often everything's a bit higgledy-piggledy all in there. Um, we'll quite commonly be checking them every month and like I said it's between the ages of four and six months that they should be losing them. If at around six months old we've still got them and, and quite typically it's the canines so that's the big long fangs that you see at the front of their mouth that get left behind we'll then go in and remove them. And if they are a small breed, we'll typically do this when they're neutered, so around kind of six to eight months old. If it is a large breed dog, which is a bit less common to be honest, but can happen, we may delay that or we may do it as a procedure in its own right. And again, the reason we do it is because if you've got a crowded mouth, bacteria is gonna sit there, it's gonna trap food into it, and you're going to be more prone to dental disease. So it is important that they are eventually shed. Um, I can see someone said that their Springer pups lost two of their canines this weekend and he's been much more bitey so it must be sore. Yes, I suspect it has been sore but he probably feels quite relieved now that they're out. Um, and like I said, you just want to give them cold things to chew on and let them chew. You know, my puppy was, would sit there for a good hour just munching away on things and that's fine. My main advice is always make sure that the toy you have is for the right breed and for the right size. Don't give a Great Dane puppy a tiny chew for a chihuahua because they will chomp it up and you'll have a foreign body <laughs> instead of a tooth problem. And the same with bull breeds. So, um, you know, bull terriers, um, bulldogs themselves, French bulldogs, um, Staffordshire bull terriers, anything like that with a big, powerful mouth, you're going to want something really robust because even as puppies, they are incredibly powerful. And the last thing you want is for them to chew up something that they're going to swallow. Um, so do follow the guidelines for anything you buy. Um, be careful, don't give bones and things like that because it's just too easy for them to swallow it and have an issue. So a firm rubber toy made for the breed, put it in the freezer or put something cold inside it, you know, like freeze some, some apple um, or some carrot or blueberries that are crushed up and that can be really nice and soothing for them. So then we've now got our full set of adult teeth through. What do we do? Well, hopefully by this point, you will have a very healthy mouth. You shouldn't have any dental disease um, from a young age. Um, dental disease, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is what would happen to us if we didn't brush our teeth? Remember when you wake up in the morning and you can feel that like film on your teeth and it's horrible and I can't wait to brush my teeth in the morning? Um, what causes that is bacteria and that's bacteria that's attracted to any food particles or saliva that's in the mouth. Dogs and cats and other animals all have this exactly the same but if they don't brush their teeth this just keeps building up and we get something called a biofilm there and that's just layers and layers of bacteria sat in the mouth. Um, and that will start to smell. That starts giving your pet a bit of a stinky breath which can be one of the first clues that there's something not quite right in there. Over time, this goes on to form plaque, which is what that kind of white, scurfy film looks like. And eventually this becomes what we call calculus and tartar. So that's when it's firm. And if you've ever had a pet that's had that before, you'll, you'll remember it because it almost looks a bit like, um, I always think it looks like a rocky mountain in some ways when you, feel, when you feel it. Cause it's all lumpy and bumpy, it's rock hard. It's often a kind of creamy white. In the later stages, it tends to go quite a nasty brown or gray color, which we never want to get to. And that's what today's about. Um, but that's what it will, will look like. And that's what we want to prevent because layers and layers and layers of bacteria that are going rock hard are gonna feed into the gums and they're gonna feed into the blood 
bloodstream and that could be bad for other organs there's lots of studies now showing that kidney disease and certain heart disease can be affected by this especially with dogs with heart murmurs so we really want to prevent all that bacteria getting into the bloodstream we also want to do it because we want to save teeth teeth are useful <laughs> it's better to have them than not have them that being said, if your pet needs extractions, they tend to do well. It's not the end of the world. I've known plenty of dogs and cats that have had to have multiple extractions and still eat food very normally. But obviously the goal is, is to give them a healthy mouth and not have to get to that point. So somebody asked earlier, when should I start looking after my pet's teeth? And the reality is the minute you own your pet. And I don't expect you to be immediately with a, an electric toothbrush and toothpaste in there, shoving, <laughs> shoving it in, brushing the teeth, you know, nice little bit of, um, of flossing as well. We don't need to be doing that. We want to start gently so they don't become fearful. And um, the best way to do that is when you have a puppy and kitten, start just by touching around their mouth or just inside their gums and then give them a treat, a well done, and that's it. Start building up. Remember, there are 42 in a dog, 30 teeth in a cat, so there's a lot in there, and we'll often just do this, <laughs> just see our, uh, our incisors and our canines and maybe our premolars, and we'll forget about all these big molars at the back that they use for chomping. So you do need to get quite far back in there, but that might spook the average pet, so you don't want to go straight in. So start gently, build up confidence and trust, and then escalate it from there. We want to eventually be getting to a daily regime with a cat or dog toothpaste, and do make sure it is a pet toothpaste because human ones are toxic and can cause an issue. So we want to keep your, your pet safe and there's lots of different brands out there. Do a bit of research, see which flavors your pets like because they're often fish or chicken flavored and see what they prefer. Um, and build it up. Start with a finger, then onto a finger brush, and then probably onto a child's toothbrush. Again, be careful with your bully breeds um, because they can sometimes have a really good chomp. Um, so if, if they're prone to that, um, just be careful it's not a fragile <laughs> toothbrush, otherwise they might be swallowing it. I'm just having a look, somebody just sent in a question. They said, one, my puppy has broken one of his baby teeth um, and our vets advise not to let him have any antlers or sticks even when he's an adult in case they break again. Um, do you think this is right? So I suppose it depends on the type of breed it is and this is what I mean. If you've got a powerful puppy and they are prone to really biting hard things and meaning it and they're going to fracture their teeth, then I agree that might not be sensible. Um, I think the best the best thing is reassess when they're adults, see what their behaviour's like. But if they're a puppy that's going a little bit too far and breaking teeth, it might be worthwhile stopping for now and then going from there. Um, <clears throat> Someone's asked, would I recommend a finger brush first then? Yes, I would, providing you haven't got a really bitey dog because otherwise you'll have a very sore finger. Um, but yes, that's usually the nicest way to do it and they tolerate it a bit more. I think some of the fearful behaviour is just because they've got this foreign object that's firing at their face and it's a bit like, oh, back off. Whereas if it's your hand, that's obviously a bit more familiar. And like I said, we want to build up to the finger brush. So hopefully you'll have done at least a month of kind of just gently touching their face, touching their teeth, getting inside their mouth before getting to there. So they're a bit more familiar with that sensation. And do you know, it's going to sound odd, have a smell of your pet's breath. Dogs and cats should have a smell. It's not going to smell like roses <laughs> ever. And we do expect some smells to their mouth. But if you are repulsed by it, that can be a warning sign. And that's something called halitosis. Um, if you notice your pet is drooling a lot, if you notice that they just gobble food down, they don't even chew it, if sometimes they drop food out the side of their mouth, all of these can be warning signs that their mouth is sore. So a, a lot of the time in practice, people say to me, um, oh, well, my, my, my dog and cat eats fine. They can't be a problem. You know, he's never stopped him eating. It can't be painful. And I think that used to be a lot of the thoughts behind dental disease. You know, if I asked my grandma, she'd say to me, oh, my dog, they just lost their teeth on their own. We never had to do any, any dental work. But um, actually, we know better now. And dogs and cats are very stoic, but they definitely feel pain and they just find avoidance methods. Um, it doesn't mean their mouth isn't sore. It just means they've learned to cope with it because they have more of a primitive instinct that if they don't eat, they're probably not going to survive. So eating doesn't mean a pain-free mouth. And that's something as owners and, and vets we all need to remember. Um, somebody's asked me, what age um, with kittens um, do you start cleaning? 
from the moment you get them ideally but not with a finger brush because their mouth will be too small and um, like I said just start by touching their mouth they're going to lose their baby teeth so I'm not so fussed about you getting in there and actually scrubbing them but you just want them to get used to that sensation of handling them handling their mouth and not being fearful it also gives you a chance to see what's normal um, it's you know it's quite easy to just forget about their mouth because like I said, as long as they're eating and drinking, we assume it's healthy, but actually it can be unhealthy and they can still eat and drink. So warning signs is a bright red gum line or gums that bleed when you touch them a bit like in ourself, because that's a sign of gingivitis. And gingivitis is inflammation of the gum line. And that's again caused by bacteria on the teeth affecting it. And over time, if you see dogs and cats with severe dental disease, the gum line will be really receded and you'll actually start to see the root of the tooth. Um, and obviously that then means going back to our anatomy, that the kind of pulp area will be easier exposed and we're getting into a bone effectively, the bone of the jaw. And so more serious things can happen like abscesses and infection within the mouth. So it's really important we don't treat disease once it's that bad. We want to prevent it or we want to you know, um, improve it with things like scales and polishes before it's severe. Um, so my recommendation is what age do you start cleaning? from a very young age. If you have a rescue pet or an older pet and you haven't done this before, the same still applies. If you have a really mouth fearful pet, then you know sometimes we just can't, we can't ha happily brush their teeth and they're going to get worse and worse for it. So the recommendations really are food changes and routine changes. I've often found recommending putting doggy or cat toothpaste on things they'll chew can at least help get it into their mouth. Um, so again, things like Kongs and licky mats can be a really good idea. Or certain chews like carrots, if your dogs like carrots, put some dog toothpaste on that, at least they'll have a good crunch on it and it'll get in their mouth. For cats, you can put it on top of their biscuits. Um, or there are a lot of foods now and treats um, that can help. Um, there's a really excellent website that's run by the Veterinary Oral Health Health Council. So that's a group of um, vets and vet nurses who are all specialists in, in, in dentistry and animals. And they basically test all the products that are released out there and said to be kind of dental products and actually check if they work. So they have a, a really complete database um, on there. You can have a good read through it and it will tell you all you need to know. And it's got a list of all the different products out there. There's a massive range. Um, I certainly always put dental biscuits in with both my cats and dogs foods um, because I'm not going to lie. I sometimes run out of time for teeth brushing <laughs> and I've taken on a lot of pets being a vet. Um, so it's a good way and, it, and it's really helped actually. Um, I always recommend dry diets um, just because it tends to help with dental hygiene as well as weight management. When they're very young, we nearly always have them on a wet food, but I'd usually recommend weaning onto a high quality dry food. Or if your pet's on a raw diet or a home cooked food, that's absolutely fine, but just have a component in there that will support dental health and allow them to chew and really activate those molars and help kind of debride some of that, that plaque away. Um, all the studies that are out there say the same thing. Daily teeth brushing is gold standard. We know daily teeth brushing is the main way to prevent dental disease. So it's exactly the same with us. Even going down to every other day, the effectiveness of that goes down by 50%, which is pretty amazing, but it is better than nothing. So I appreciate everyone's busy and we can't always commit to a daily regime, but if you have teeth, at least on your mind, to be checking them, to be doing what you can, brushing when you can, introducing things into their daily routine that can help keep them safe, that's already so much better than just waiting for your annual booster for the vet to go, there's a lot of plaque on here, and then being like, whoops, <laughs> and trying to get it off because plaque is really hard and it's quite difficult to shift. Um, somebody's asked, are there any specific food recommendations to help with teeth? What I'd say is go on the Veterinary Oral Health Council website because they have a list of them. There's a big, big range. Um, if it's on that website and it has a high review from them, it has scientific evidence behind it. There are quite a few that are manufactured that perhaps have, um, shall we say, a, a little bit more advertising material behind them than substance. So do use that <laughs> website as a guide um, and, and you'll you, you end up with good things. Um, so really, I wanted to, to get back on track. So we've talked about puppies and kittens and supporting them through teething. 
we've touched on what um, dental disease is, so that biofilm of bacteria that becomes plaque, that eventually becomes tartar and calculus, so that horrible kind of hard stuff that's quite hard to shift. And send me a thumbs up or an emoji if that all makes sense. Um, and then I suppose the next thing is what, what diseases do we see in adult animals that are common and, and what can we do about them? So um, in, in cats, one of the most common one is something called feline odontoclastic resorbative lesions, which is way too much of a mouthful. So we call it falls, F-O-R-L-S, <laughs> well, that's much easier to say. And um, it's quite an interesting disease in that we don't really understand it. And it's something that vets and the veterinary profession has known about for years but we still aren't a hundred percent sure why it happens but what seems to happen is something called the odontoclasts which are cells in the body that are usually involved in breaking down bone go into override and they start destroying the bone in the mouth and that allows the tooth to start to be resorbed and it usually starts from the root up so if we go back to this beautiful diagram, <laughs> um, so our roots down here, and it tends to absorb upwards. But you can imagine the minute we get into this pulp section, that might start to get painful because we've got nerves and blood vessels through here. Um, and we don't see this. So this is all we see in our pet. So none of this is visible. The only way we're going to see that is with an x-ray and a dental x-ray at that. Um, sometimes, however, we pick these up on examinations because as it heads up, you start to get exposure at this portion here. So where the gum usually sits, you'll start to see little cavities appearing and you might even see that pulp. And that's very painful. So you can imagine your cat will be sat there chomping away on their food and a bit of food pokes them in the pulp. Ouchie, it's really, really sore. Um, we know dental disease is rated as one of the most painful pains. Um, so eye pain and oral pain is meant to be the worst um, of all the pains that you can do, even worse than kind of broken leg bones. Um, so it's not to be underestimated. And I suppose the question comes, what do we do with this? Because a lot of the time we don't pick it up until it's on the surface. So this can be something that's referred um, to a specialist and sometimes they're able to do root canals and save the crown, which is that white bit of tooth we spoke about earlier. Um, or we sometimes will just remove the tooth as a whole. This can be more tricky because it's all absorbed and so the bone's involved. Um, and it's something when we know about it, we keep a really close eye on. And these cats will sometimes have a yearly x-ray in dental to monitor um, how this disease is progressing because until it's at the surface or causing an issue we don't always need to do something about it so falls is a useful thing to know about and this is again why checking your pet's teeth is really useful because it may be that I'm going to use my cat's name pudding it may be that pudding would normally let me look at all her teeth and then one day I pull down her gum and she flinches away from me and I now know that's weird like pudding usually lets me look in her mouth so or it might be that I notice oh that tooth you know, I can see more root than I normally can and things like that. So getting used to what's normal in your pet's mouth can be so helpful because as vets, we don't always know what's normal, whereas you do if you're seeing them every day and therefore you can pick up diseases earlier. And it also means when you come to see us, you can tell us about it and say, I can tell you that last week this definitely wasn't like this. And so it gives us a bit more of a timeline. We're ahead of the game. We can do more to treat it. In terms of dogs, um, common diseases, I suppose fractured teeth is definitely up there. So um, again, our big powerful bull breeds love to chew on sticks and stones and silly things, and they tend to fracture their tooth. It really depends where the fracture is as to how much we need to do about it. If it's exposing that pulp cavity, we need to do something because the nerves and the blood vessels will be exposed bacteria can get in and we can get abscesses and all sorts and it's going to be really painful and um, sometimes we remove the teeth again we've got the option of referring to a specialist otherwise who may be able to put a, a crown on or salvage the tooth and save it or fill that cavity in and um, so you don't have to have the tooth lost um, other things that dogs can do um, is, is just wear and tear. So you'll often see a lot of Labradors and Springers and dogs that like ball chasing and catching things wear their teeth down. So they can come in with these really, really short little teeth. And again, it's usually the enamel. So it's often just the crown that's worn down and, and therefore it's not painful. It doesn't look particularly pretty. <laughs> They've got nubby little teeth, um, but it actually doesn't cause them a problem. So um, as long as they're comfortable in their mouth and there's no signs of gingivitis, so reddened gums or the pain, smelly breath, dropping food when they're eating, things like that, 
we don't need to worry about it. The most common disease that we see in dogs is just good old standal periodontal disease or dental disease, which is from that buildup of the plaque, again, affecting the gum line and causing the recession. So it's from us not being on top of the biofilm. So the food that sat on the tooth, allowing accumulation of bacteria, more and more bacteria into the gum line. So it's all about preventative health care. And that's the most important thing. If you're going to take anything from this talk, it's prevention is so much better than cure um, for teeth. Um, and if you've got a pet who is just a nightmare and you just can't get on top of their dental disease, sometimes we end up doing more frequent scale and polishes. And what I mean by that is a bit like what we'd have in the dentist chair. We use a scaler under an anaesthetic to clear away all that plaque and then we polish down the teeth so they're a completely buffered clean surface. And then we've got a fresh start again and hopefully you try retraining, changing the diet, doing things to help. But if that is the only compromise, sometimes that's what we have to do and it's not invasive. It reduces the bacterial load and it means those teeth should be saved as well. So it's kind of a win-win to be honest, but the best case is that you guys feel confident enough to manage your pet's teeth at home. And if you can commit to daily brushing, that is the best. If you can't, get on the Veterinary or Health Council website, find some products that will support it, check the diet your pet is on. Is a Oh, sorry, I think I just timed out for a second there with my connection. I hope that was okay. But yeah, just double check that your the quality of the food is good for your pet as well. Um, if you're not sure, most vets and vet nurses will happily chat to you about it. Again, First Vet, um, we're an online triage service. We're also here for advice. Waggle offers our service 24-7 for free with their policy. So if you've got questions about this, we're also here to help. So you can always book a consultation with us to have a chat. We're more than happy to help you. Um, had another question here. When should I start properly brushing my puppy's teeth and how often realistically should I do it? He's 17 weeks old. Um, so again, start now, but you don't need to commit to um, using a toothbrush. Just start touching his mouth, get him used to you handling his face, a bit like you should with his nails and with his ears. You want to, you really want to do the preventative stuff before it's painful or a problem. Otherwise, they're going to associate it with, with being sore and they're not going to want you to do it then. So if you've got a good puppy, now's the chance to start training him to touch it. And you can do a command like mouth or teeth. If you're clicker training them, reinforce it with that. That can really help as well. But you're never too young to start um, with this. Um, somebody's asked, can dental disease be reversed once they get it? Um, it depends what type of dental disease. So things like falls, so feline odontoclastic resorbative lesions in cats, they're not really reversible. They're just something we have to treat as it goes. But if we're talking about more of the periodontal diseases or gingivitis, again, if we are at the earlier stages of it, so when it's more like a film and we've got mild gingivitis, yes, with brushing and with some changes, we may be able to remove that and get it back to normal. When we have more severe disease, so when you've got very thick calculus on the teeth, often that does need to be removed with a professional scale and polish um, because we'll polish under the gum line as well and, and scale under there to get all the bacteria out. Um, and occasionally what can happen is that calculus can can cover cavities. Um, so quite commonly you'll look in the mouth and it will look like all the teeth are intact and then you remove that thick, thick calculus and underneath it are loads of holes because what we were discussing earlier is as you get bacteria in the gum line recedes and the plaque will carry on invading in but that hides a whole load of sins in there so once it's thick and it's hard and it's like cement usually we need to to be involved so the vets have to get involved refresh it it may be the teeth underneath are salvageable or it may be some come out but if we're in the much earlier stages where it's just kind of a little bit irritated and early biofilm a hundred percent you can often get that back to to as good as new or, or close to it with regular teeth brushing a diet that's dental friendly as well um, and by regular i do ideally mean daily teeth brushing um, with a pet toothpaste and always make sure it's a pet toothpaste as well <clears throat> Um, so we're coming close to the end of the talk. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to send them in or you can comment later on. I hope that has been helpful. Um, it's a massive topic. I didn't want to go 
too in depth with everything but um i hope that has covered most people's queries um i think if you have any others ask questions ask your vets and vet nurses like i said first vet we're always here to help as well um and also with um with waggle you are covered up to a thousand pounds with your policy providing it's not a pre-existing condition so it may be time if you are worried to book in a consultation with your vet uh, and get a check over if you're noticing kind of a, a stinky breath or you're thinking oh maybe maybe i forgot about his teeth because <laughs> i was focusing on all the other good bits and um, somebody's just put um, you've made me realize how lazy i've become with our springers we hardly ever brush just relying on a product um, and chewing products i'll start again tonight well that's brilliant i'm glad i'm inspired you and don't feel lazy we all do it because we look at our pets eating and we think oh they're fine and you know a lot of the time they're, they're okay but it's all about getting in there and, and remembering to do it so I'm really pleased that you've been inspired to do that I'm sure your springers will be super grateful as well um it's been lovely speaking to you all and I hope you all have a lovely evening um and hopefully I'll get to do another session on something else interesting in the future take care and have a good night